the 22nd of June, 1941. With 134 divisions at full fighting strength and 73 more divisions for deployment behind the front, Nazi Germany, under the codename Operation Barbarossa, invades the Soviet Union, its ally in the war against Poland. Hitler considers the invasion as part of his plan to provide the German nation with Lebensraum, meaning living space, and an opportunity to destroy communism, which he loathes. The Soviet Union sees catastrophic military losses in the first weeks after the German attack, and in total, 5.7 million Soviet prisoners of war fall into German captivity. One of them is the eldest son of Josef Stalin. His name is Yakov Jugashvili. Yakov Yosovovich Jugashvili was born on the 31st of March, 1907, in Baji, Georgia, then part of the Russian Empire. His mother, Kato Svanice, was the first wife of Josef Stalin, and they married in 1906, when Stalin was still rising in the ranks of the Bolshevik party. Svanice was very devout and insisted on a religious wedding in a church, which the atheist Stalin accepted. Svanice worshipped her husband like a demigod, found him charming, and was fascinated by his intellect. Stalin would later in life describe Svanice as follows. She was very sweet and beautiful. She melted my heart. A few months after Yakov's birth, Stalin was involved in a high-profile bank robbery, and the three of them fled from Georgia to Baku, Azerbaijan, to avoid arrest. Stalin was frequently away from home, leaving Svanice alone in a place where she did not know many people. The stress of worrying about Stalin, as well as the warm climate, took a toll on her health, and Svanice soon fell ill. Her family invited her to move back to Racha, Georgia, which has a milder climate to recover and to be with people she knew, but Svanice was reluctant to abandon her husband. Stalin was concerned about her health and decided to bring her back to her family in Belisi, Georgia. However, on the 13-hour journey back to Georgia, Svanitsa drank some contaminated water and contracted typhus. She died on the 5th of December, 1907, three weeks after her return to Belisi. Stalin was devastated by the death of his wife, and at the funeral he allegedly said, This creature softened my heart of stone. She died, and with her died my last warm feelings for humanity. He was so overwhelmed with grief that his comrades took his gun away from him. During the funeral, Stalin threw himself into her grave and had to be dragged out. After the funeral, he left Georgia and returned to Azerbaijan abandoning the eight-month-old Yakov to be raised by his mother's relatives. Stalin would not return to visit his son for several years, and Yakov would spend the next 14 years being raised by his aunts. When the 14-year-old Yakov was brought to Moscow in 1921 to live with Stalin, he found out that his father had remarried with his second wife, Nadezhda Aliluyeva. Yakov's half-siblings, Vasily and Svetlana, were born after he moved. In the beginning, Yakov struggled to settle in Moscow because he did not understand Russian, and his relationship with his father was strained. Stalin physically and emotionally abused his son, and he even forbade him from changing his last name to Stalin. It is believed that Stalin hated Yakov because he resembled his mother, which was one of the happier times in Stalin's life. However, Yakov, a kind individual, was close to his half-siblings, as well as his stepmother Nadezhda Aleluyeva, who was only six years older than him. In 1928, Yakov met 16-year-old Zoya Gunina, the daughter of an Orthodox priest, and after living together, they decided to marry. When the couple announced their decision to Stalin, he got so angry that Zoya ran away in tears, and Yakov took out a pistol and tried to kill himself. He fired a bullet into his chest, attempting to shoot himself in the heart. Instead, he missed, and the bullet traveled into his lung. After the failed suicide incident, Stalin just shook his head and dismissively said to his son, You can't even do this properly. Yakov and Zoya eventually did get married, and in 1929 a daughter was born, but she died eight months later of pneumonia, and the couple split up. In 1935, Yakov graduated from the Institute of Transport. On the 10th of January, 1936, his son Yevgeny Jugashvili was born. His mother was a student, Olga Golisheva, with whom Yakov was engaged, but the relationship soon ended. Yakov only learned of his son in 1938 and ensured he took his surname. However, Stalin never recognized Yevgeny as his grandson. 
On the 18th of February 1938, Yaakov married Yulia Meltzer, a well-known Jewish dancer from Odessa. On the following day, their only child, a daughter Galina, was born. In May 1941, after four years of study, Yaakov graduated from the Artillery Academy, which was supposed to prepare him for what was soon about to come. The Second World War began on the 1st of September 1939, when Nazi Germany invaded Poland. Poland found itself fighting a two-front war when it was invaded by the Soviet Union from the east on the 17th of September. Warsaw officially surrendered to the Germans on the 28th of September, and one day later, in accordance with a secret protocol to their non-aggression pact, Germany and the Soviet Union partitioned Poland. However, Adolf Hitler had always regarded the 23rd of August 1939 German-Soviet non-aggression pact, commonly referred to as the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact, as a temporary tactical maneuver. In July 1940, just weeks after the German conquest of France and the Low Countries, Belgium, Luxembourg and the Netherlands, Hitler decided to attack the Soviet Union within the following year. On the 18th of December 1940, he signed Directive 21, codenamed Operation Barbarossa. This was the first Operation Lauder for the invasion of the Soviet Union. Operation Barbarossa began on Sunday the 22nd of June 1941. Three million German soldiers were reinforced by Finnish, Romanian, Hungarian, Italian, Slovak, and Croatian troops. Within weeks, German divisions conquered the Baltic republics of Latvia, Lithuania, and Estonia. In September, the Germans laid siege to Sevastopol and Leningrad, and by late October, the cities of Minsk, Smolensk, Kiev, Odessa, and Kharkov had fallen. Millions of Soviet soldiers were encircled, cut off from supplies and reinforcements, and forced to surrender. Yet for Nazi Germany, this attack was not an ordinary military operation. The war against the Soviet Union was a war of annihilation between German fascism and Soviet communism, a racial war between German Aryans and subhuman Slavs and Jews. From the very beginning, this war of annihilation against the Soviet Union included the killing of prisoners of war on a massive scale. In part, German officials excused their ill-treatment and murder of Soviet prisoners of war by pointing out that the Soviet Union was not a signatory to the Geneva Conventions, and its soldiers did not warrant the protection that the Convention extended to prisoners of war. In reality, their reasons were more complex. German authorities viewed Soviet prisoners of war as a particular threat, regarding them not only as Slavic subhumans, but also as part of the Bolshevik menace linked in Nazi ideology to the concept of Jewish conspiracy. Yakov was a reserve fighter in the Red Army, but when war broke out, he was sent to battle as if he were just another typical soldier. Rather than seeing him off personally, Stalin called his son on the telephone and shouted at him, Go and fight! Yakov had served as a lieutenant in the 14th Tank Division when he was captured during the Battle of Smolensk on the 16th of July, 1941. Smolensk was a significant city located on the road to Moscow, and the Germans aimed to capture it as part of their overall strategy to advance deep into Soviet territory. After the defeat in the Battle of Bialystok and Minsk, in which three Soviet armies on the Western Front had been crushed, the Red Army set up a new defensive line in the area around Smolensk, with a total of 42 divisions at the beginning of July 1941. The Germans, employing their Blitzkrieg, meaning lightning war tactics, managed to encircle a substantial portion of the Soviet forces around Smolensk. This led to the destruction of a significant number of Soviet divisions. Despite the Soviet resistance, the overwhelming strength of the German forces led to the strategic withdrawal of the Soviet troops from the city. Smolensk, located only 400 kilometers away from Moscow, fell to the Germans on the 10th of September, 1941. Stalin was furious when he heard the news about Yakov's capture. He had previously ordered that no soldiers were to surrender, so the idea that his own son had done so was seen as a disgrace. He was angry that Yakov had not killed himself instead of being captured, and suspected that someone had betrayed him. Yakov's wife, Yulia, was not immediately told the news, and suspicious of her motives, and the idea that Yakov surrendered, Stalin had her arrested. To conceal his identity, Yakov removed his officer's insignia and tried to pass as a soldier. But several of Yakov's servicemen betrayed his identity to the Germans because they hated Stalin and the Soviet system. 
During the interrogation, Yakov openly criticized his division and other units of the Red Army, saying that they were unprepared for the war, and further commented that the military commanders behaved poorly. He felt that the United Kingdom was weak and had never helped anyone while praising Germany, noting it was the only major empire left and that the whole of Europe would be nothing without it. Although his wife and her family were ethnically Jewish, Yakov was also openly anti-Semitic and claimed Jews trade or aspire to careers in engineering, but they do not want to be workers, technicians, or peasant laborers. That's why no one in our country respects the Jews. The brutal treatment of Soviet prisoners of war by the Germans violated every standard of warfare. Existing sources suggest that some 5.7 million Soviet army personnel fell into German hands during World War II. As of January 1945, the German army reported that only about 930,000 Soviet prisoners of war remained in German custody. The German army released about 1 million Soviet prisoners of war as auxiliaries of the German army and the SS. About half a million Soviet prisoners of war had escaped German custody or had been liberated by the Soviet army as it advanced westward through Eastern Europe into Germany. The remaining 3.3 million, or about 57% of those taken prisoners, were dead by the end of the war. Second only to the Jews, Soviet prisoners of war were the largest groups of victims of Nazi racial policy. The Germans intended to use Yakov in their propaganda against the Soviets. He was pictured on the leaflets dropped over Soviet soldiers, shown smiling with his captors. The back of the leaflet was part of a letter he wrote to Stalin shortly after his capture. Dear Father, I have been taken prisoner. I am in good health. I will soon be sent to a camp for officers in Germany. I am being treated well. I wish you good health. Greetings to everyone. Yasha. Yakov was subsequently moved to a guarded villa in Berlin, where Josef Goebbels, the Nazi propaganda minister, hoped to use him on Russian language radio broadcasts, but that never materialized. Stalin tried several discreet rescue attempts to recover Jugashvili from the Germans, but each was unsuccessful. Around the same time, Hitler offered Stalin a deal. The Germans would exchange his son for Field Marshal Friedrich Paulus, who had surrendered at the Battle of Stalingrad in February 1943. In response, Stalin said, I do not trade field marshals for lieutenants. When Yakov was no longer of use to the Nazis, he was sent to the Sachsenhausen concentration camp. The SS established the Sachsenhausen concentration camp as the principal concentration camp for the Berlin area. The camp was opened in July 1936, and in the early stage of the camp's existence, the SS and police incarcerated mainly political opponents and real or perceived criminal offenders in Sachsenhausen. By the end of 1936, the camp held 1,600 prisoners. Between 1936 and 1945, however, Sachsenhausen also held Jews, gay men, Jehovah's Witnesses, and asocials. The first group of Soviet prisoners of war arrived in Sachsenhausen at the end of August 1941. By the end of October of the same year, the SS had deported about 12,000 Soviet prisoners of war to Sachsenhausen. Camp authorities shot thousands of Soviet prisoners of war shortly after they arrived in the camp. Estimates of the Soviet prisoners of war killed at Sachsenhausen range from 11 to 18,000. At Sachsenhausen, Yakov lived in a special compound for prominent persons separated from the rest of the prisoner population. It was 140 meters long and 50 meters wide, sealed off from the main camp by a brick wall. Compared with the conditions endured by the rest of the Sachsenhausen inmates, their quarters were comfortable. A 2.6 meter high voltage fence was intended to prevent inmates from escaping. In Sachsenhausen, Yakov shared a hut with another Soviet officer, Vasily Kokodin, a nephew of Stalin's foreign minister, Vyacheslav Molotov, and with four British prisoners of war. Whilst at Sachsenhausen, Yakov was constantly frequented by visitors who wanted to meet and photograph the son of Stalin. These visits made Yakov mentally and emotionally distressed. He also argued with the British prisoners and would frequently get in physical confrontations with them. The final straw seemed to have been the accusation from the Britons that Yakov and Kokodin had deliberately fouled the communal latrine. Yakov Jugashvili was 36 years old when he died on the 14th of April, 1943. The official Nazi propaganda stated that he was shot during an escape attempt. However, his alleged escape attempt was actually an act of suicide. 
An autopsy showed that Yakov Jugashvili died when he threw himself into the electric fence surrounding the camp. And when the camp guard shot Yakov four times, he fired the bullets into Yakov's already dead body. Upon hearing of his son's death, Stalin reportedly stared at his photograph. After the war, British officers in charge of captured German archives came upon papers depicting Yakov's death at Sachsenhausen. As officials in Whitehall I, which served as the center of Britain's war effort, waited for a full translation of the SS report, they discussed with US diplomats the idea of informing Stalin of how his son had died. The conference between Stalin, Winston Churchill, and Harry Truman at Potsdam in July 1945 seemed to be ideal for this purpose. However, once the complete document had been studied, the Foreign Office quickly abandoned the plan, with one diplomat concluding that he and his colleagues do not think the evidence would give Stalin any comfort, and it would be naturally distasteful for us to draw attention to the Anglo-Russian quarrels which preceded the death of his son. After the war, unaware of what had happened to his son, Stalin offered a $250,000 reward in East Germany to anyone who could provide details of his death. He would later soften his stance towards Yakov, saying he was a real man and that fate had treated him unjustly. Yulia Melter, Yakov's wife, would be released in 1946 and reunited with their daughter Galina, though the years apart had made Galina distant from her mother. Stalin died on the 5th of March, 1953. 24 years later, in 1977, Yakov Jugashvili was posthumously awarded the Order of the Patriotic War First Class, although this was done secretly, and the family was not allowed to collect the medal itself. Thanks for watching the World History Channel. Be sure to like and subscribe, and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss our next episodes. We thank you, and we'll see you next time on the channel.